Namaskaram Sadhguru. I've read uh, many of your books and I've learned a lot. I've also been touched deeply by Kriyas and Hatha Yoga. I was wondering why is it that you don't teach Kriyas and Hatha Yoga through books? Wouldn't that reach more people? Thank you. <laughs> yoga is not something that you teach. Yoga is something that you transmit. A book cannot do transmission. A book can give you information and inspiration. So we are writing books to inspire people to take to yoga, not to instruct people into yoga or transmit yoga through the book. Well, as there are many, many forms of yoga, there is also one form of yoga called book yoga. <laughs> that is, people want to learn yoga through books. Well, if you don't have any trouble with… in your life, even if the virus did not show interest in you, humans pick up a yoga book and try to practice yoga with a book. There are so many books wanting to teach yoga to people. Fortunately, people who buy these books, generally they flip through, they don't read through. If they read through, they don't practice. If they practice within first three to five days, they will give it up. But there are a few people who will take this up seriously and do it. There are thousands of cases or many more who have caused immense damage to themselves by doing book yoga. Because when you do yoga through the book, you won't start with the basics. Whatever is they are saying is the highest practice, that's where you start because of course you're eligible, <laughs> because you can read. Well, I forget which year. Huh? 86. Eighty-six? Oh. <laughs> so some of them might have been cases. Why is that man moving like that? Hello? You trying to spread the virus? <laughs> Sit down somewhere. Huh? What is that? Oh, then you must fly. <laughs> I thought you were trying to do relay, virus relay. <laughs> So, uh, in 1986, when they made a survey in the Nimhans Institute in Bangalore, Nimhans Institute is a premier uh, neurosciences institution or it's a mental asylum on one level, not really an asylum, a hospital more. Eight percent of the inpatients that year were improper yoga cases. There are thousands of ways for you to drive yourself mad. There are. If you want, I can tell you how many ways you can do it. Or maybe you yourself are an expert. But eight percent of the people choose yoga as their path to ma madness. That's incredible. What should be an ultimate solution to your life becomes the pathway to madness. This is simply because without preparatory steps, without any transmission, just picking up odd instructions and trying to do something. Fortunately, most of them don't practice after some time. Those who take it seriously uh, will pay a very huge price. It is… I know I will invite a lot of flack for this, but that's not new to me. So, let me say this, in a way teaching intricate yoga or yogic processes which are inward directed processes through a book is a crime, it's a crime. 
it is like there are some people, you know some time ago it was there, now it's been removed. There are some people who have access to scientific information and at a time just about before this, uh, probably before 2003 or 4 at that time, there was clear instructions as to how to make a nuclear bomb on the web, on the internet. You could get everything as to how to make a nuclear bomb. Only problem was assimilating the material. But if you had access to material, every bit of information how to make a nuclear bomb was all there. Now they've removed because whatever, the security situations are such. So using knowledge in this manner is not a responsible thing, it's a crime. First of all, nuclear bomb is anyway a crime. Unfortunately, it is needed because somebody else has it, you're nervous about it, so you have it, because you have it, somebody else has it, because they have it, somebody else has it. Well, this is an unfortunate reality in the world, but putting it out on the net, how to make a nuclear bomb is definitely a crime, isn't it? In a way, yoga is much more than nuclear science when it comes to you as an individual person, because this can make something else happen within you. It can transform a human being into another possibility. If it's mishandled, it can also destroy a human being. So, when it comes to transmission, it's made in such a way, even if thousands of people are in the same hall, not everybody will receive the same thing. You can… you can check the experiences of people, not everybody will receive the same thing, even if all of them are sitting in the same session, because that is how it is transmitted, each according to their own, you know, receptivity that they have. That's the way it should be. So that is the nature of transmission, subjective transmission. But putting all that in a book and thinking it's going to work, no, this book is definitely written by somebody, who has no experience of any kind because they've read something somewhere and they put it here. Anybody who has experienced the potency of what it is will never do that ever. So please, uh, don't do book yoga, but please buy the death book <laughs> 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 This is the first time I'm advertising for a book <laughs> because all the other books had a choice whether you can read it or not read it. This one, this is for all those who shall die. <laughs> we will leave the immortal ones, the rest must read. Please put out lots of books out in the ashram so that people can pick it up and read. Don't do book yoga. <laughs> what you call as life is packed between two dimensions called birth and death. If you do not… if you do not hold the two ends of life properly, life will spill out of your hands. It won't be in your hands. This is why death. Birth happened without your permission. 